Hey guys, welcome back to another Phoebe Medical video. Today I got a little infomatic about vacuum regulators because there are some things about vacuum regulators I bet you didn't know because I didn't know. Uh, even a couple weeks ago I didn't know. And through my research, through doing business, I've had to study up on some of this stuff in order to answer questions for customers correctly. So anyway, let's take a look at some of the examples I got here on the desk. So guys, there are three main types of vacuum regulators. There's continuous, there's continuous intermittent, and then there's continuous high or surgical suction regulators, which I don't have any examples of here. And I am currently at our vacuum regulator repair station, and I just pulled some examples out to show you guys some of the examples of what we see. And, and you can see a trend in technology as it goes throughout the years as well. So you see some really old ones. They're still in, in service. We can still repair them here. And you know, it's still economical to repair some of these guys, but some of them are brand new and they have some of the same failure modes. So, but anyway, we have uh, a continuous, which is one like this. This is the first one I mentioned. Notice how the scale goes to, from 20 to 200, and that's millimeters of mercury. And the switch only is on or off. And you can see here that it goes to max. So on this type, on is regulated, max is full open vacuum for the most it can do. Now just because you have maximum vacuum pressure doesn't mean that you have flow, which is why we have continuous high flow for surgical, because when you are doing a cavity evacuation or something like that, you need to have high, high flow and you're not gonna get that from these. These only go up to 200 and well, it is what it is guys. If you notice on these ones, see how it says continuous, off, and intermittent? This one here, continuous, off, intermittent. And this one here, you can see it also says off, regulated, and intermittent. So these all are continuous intermittent regulators. And this is the most common one that you're gonna see in medical facilities because continuous is gonna be for certain things uh, that you just, have to slowly stave off. Intermittent is going to be for things like what I had to go through, unfortunately. Uh, if you're gonna run like a chest tube or something like that, you're gonna want it to very slowly do a pull of vacuum on like say my chest cavity. <laughs> but intermittent is, is going to be on and then it's gonna shut off and then it's gonna turn itself back on and then it's, it's gonna go off. And when it's intermittent, it's going to be for whatever you set through the regulator, okay? And the way that you set a regulator, you have to occlude the unit and then you can set the dial. So I usually take like a rubber glove or something and I occlude it and now you can adjust your vacuum needle. So trying to adjust this without it being occluded, you have no pressure. So how are you gonna, how are you gonna set your gauge? I hope that you guys take notice that there are different inputs and outputs on each and every one of these. Now this here is called a hose barb, and you know some of them don't even have that on them. Uh, some of them will have a hose barb, some of them will have a vacuum regulator separator chamber, which is like this guy right here, and that will plug into the bottom, and there is a cone, let's see, do we have any cones over here? There's a cone, which is also a float, and the float will come up and it will block off your incoming vacuum or your outgoing vacuum actually, it goes into the regulator. So what will happen is if you connect the patient side right here and as this chamber fills up, which you should never have liquids going into a regulator, but this is like a protection. So when fluids get into here, the float will occlude this outgoing tube so that the fluids never make it into your vacuum regulator. So if you see this style right here, that's what it's for. It's for one of these uh, water or fluid separation chambers. Now this one here obviously doesn't have that option. It's just a barb. You're just gonna connect this one here straight to your vacuum reservoir and you're good to go. This one here has got a uh, vacuum fitting for when you are gonna connect a hose to a, another medical device that's what this style connection is right here. It's gonna be a white vacuum hose, much like, I don't know, do I have any on the wall? I don't. 
So anyway, there's a white vacuum hose that screws onto this type of fitting right here. And that would go to another medical device. So this one here connects to a water separator. This one here connects straight to a uh, vacuum reservoir. This style here we use to connect to another medical device. On the back of these ones here, you can see I have a variety of output. This connects to your wall. Now notice that this one here has got the screw down fitting, which the screw down fitting is almost exactly what I was talking about right here. You can see how normally this one here would be a hose. But you can see the type of vacuum fitting that normally connects to it. So there's this style. There's your quick connect, which is this style right here. And you've got the ones that are not configured. So when you order one of these vacuum regulators, not only do we have to know if you're looking for a continuous, continuous intermittent, or a surgical, which I'll drop a photo in the, in the video so that you can see what it looks like, but you also need to know what type of fitting you're going to have on the uh, output side. So the output of this one is the screw-on type. This one here is the quick connect. There are a couple different other ones, but those are some of the pieces of information you need to know if you're gonna order a vacuum regulator. We have our continuous, we have our continuous intermittent. There are things that you have to know when you go to order these things. Let us know if you ever need uh, one of the water traps. Let us know if you need a quick connect or screw on style output. And guys, that is pretty much all I can tell you about vacuum regulators. So as you can see, there's a little bit more to vacuum regulators than what you probably thought. And that's because they are so diverse and we can use them all throughout a medical facility. You're gonna have to have different types of connections. Anyway guys, that's all I got for you. Thanks for watching.